This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up? What's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the Mark Weber. Dub them east. And welcome into the Onside Kick here on Most Valuable Podcast, your one stop shop for all the latest football news, football happenings. Mark, we're almost there. Yeah. We're almost there. Football is officially back on TV. I saw something on Facebook where they counted down the, like, every single walk off touchdown, like, win it in overtime mm-hmm. in the last decade, and it just got me hyped for football. I can't wait for it. They ended it with the Super Bowl, with this past one with the Patriots, walking it off and getting the win in overtime. But we got a jam-packed show for you guys. We're going to be talking rookies. Mark, you get to talk Love about it. your boy, the Trubiscuit. Mitch. You get to talk about the Trubiscuit. That's, that's my uh, new computer background. <laughs> going to look at Mitch. Going to look at Deshaun. Going to look at Deshaun. Two Deshauns in one show. Might get a little confusing. But then we're also going to look at the big trade that happened also. And we're going to look at two sides of it. The Eagles... I think are the lesser of the three teams that were in on the trade. So we're going to look at the first, the Bills, and are they in full rebuild mode now? And then we're going to look at the Rams and what Sammy Watkins brings to that team and Jared Goff. But, Mark, I want to start with these rookie quarterbacks. And you had all three of them get time in their preseason game. Deshaun Kaiser against the Saints. They get the win 20-14, to which is important. 11 of 18, 148 yards, one touchdown, no INTs, but was sacked three times. Yet your boy Mitch Trubisky, 18 of 25, 166 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. And then Deshaun Watson, 15 of 25, 179 yards, no throwing touchdowns, was sacked three times, but got in on an impressive run on the ground. I'm going to ask you this simple question because this has been floating around the internet today. Should Trubisky, Watson, or Kaiser start week one for their respective teams? I'm still going with my my current uh, answer. Nothing has changed for me, mm-hmm. you know, from prior to week one of the preseason now after. Uh, none of these guys really should be starting just yet, but I think Deshaun Watson's going to be the first one to do it. Mm-hmm. That's still where I'm standing. I mean, you know, I, I think that all of these guys looked really impressive. All of them showed why they were drafted in the first round, why teams, all three teams, traded up to get one of these guys. It's it's actually pretty impressive that nobody really looked that bad. I mean, Watson and Kaiser both got sacked a few too many times, not necessarily completely their fault mm-hmm. in those uh, scenarios because there's a lot that goes into that. Um, although it does make you a little bit nervous of, come on, protect these young guys. Mm-hmm. We don't want them getting hurt uh, as, you know... You got some other high round draft picks like Leonard Fournette uh, that it is re- hurt, re-injured that foot right now. Yeah, that that's what you don't want. Um, so yeah, I mean, all these guys definitely looked good. I mean, when I when I really think about it, I'm sitting there saying, is this rookie quarterback going to win me more games than the guys in front of them? Mm-hmm. And right now, week one of the preseason, I'm not willing to say yes. To any three of these guys that they're going to get you more wins. And it's not a knock on them. It's not necessarily praise of the guys above them necessarily. It's just saying that they looked good against a bunch of backups, playing with some backups. Mm -hmm. So I want to give them credit for that. Um, I think that all of them showed the intangibles. All of them showed the skills. You got what you want to see. Now it's the, okay, well, let's see it again. Yeah, and I mean... I'm kind of on the same boat as you, but I'm a little different. If I'm picking any of these guys to – well, actually, let me rephrase that. I am going to pick one of these guys, Deshaun Watson. Yeah, it's the same guy that both of us think should be But the only difference from how we're wording it is you said that, you know what, he'll be the first one to take over. Yeah. I'm saying after the first preseason, and I get it, hashtag preseason overreactions, Mm -hmm. but – I look at that, and I think that the team that he is on, he's the one that, boom, should be starting Well, there's really one. no one that great in front of him. I mean, Tom Savage I, There's is people that like that Tom impressive. Savage. There are people out really there get, that like Tom Savage. I don't really get why. I mean, he's shown some flashes, mm-hmm. sure, 
Uh, but he's never really shown you that he's going to be that guy to take over. Mm-hmm. People just liked Tom Savage because he was relief from uh, poor quarterback play in the past, you know, those couple of times he's gotten his chance to shine. Mm-hmm. But the problem is when he had a chance to shine, he never really shined. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he probably had the the best numbers of the real starters in the preseason for these three teams going, you know, 9 for 11, 69 yards. Nothing mm-hmm. impressive, but it's the first week. Starters Mitch don't play just got a lot of throws and a lot of work in his first Mitch game. had over an entire second half to play, mm-hmm. and he... Uh, the difference, I think, a little bit with a guy like Mitch um, Trubisky compared to the starter, Mike Glennon, or mm-hmm. Mark Sanchez, who basically got a drive, is that the offense in Chicago played to his strengths. They said, we know what he can do. We Mm -hmm. know what he can't do that well just yet. So let's play to his strength. And sure, you can game plan like that and make Mm -hmm. it happen. Um, Although the Chicago Bears offense has not really shown the ability to game plan that often. True. Uh, The the big thing is just that they did what he did best. I think he can still learn and he can still become better at those other things. That's what Mm -hmm. you want. Deshaun Watson, I don't know. Bill O'Brien, I'm not... I like him, but I don't like him at the same time. And I'm not really convinced that he can do that well uh, on his own unless he gets a quarterback like Deshaun Watson Mm -hmm. who can do it himself. That's when I think that Bill O'Brien will do better um, because he probably should have been able to get something out of one of these guys, and he really hasn't been able to get anything out of any of these quarterbacks he's had so far. Well, and that's why I'm looking at it to where I get that part of it than – I think that Deshaun Watson might be different. Might be different. Well, he's a game changer on his own. Well, and he's also a guy where he showed you in week one of the preseason. Each of these guys showed you what they could be. Mitch Trubisky, I will say this. Although every Bear fan that has come out either on my Twitter, on my Facebook, or on my Snapchat and have been praising Mitch Trubisky— Let's be honest. He was going like I get it. You're you're gonna say like, well, you know, he even played with second and third stringers, but he was going up against second and third stringers. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, it's not like I'm knocking him down, get down. It's yes, the skills were there, but let's not blow smoke. But what you're, I mean, yeah, what you're really trying to say is that let's be realistic here, people. Well, not only that is that he should be better than these guys. Yes, he should. You traded up. To get him at number two. Yeah, it shouldn't he be. He should be better than a third string. This isn't a surprise that he should be good. You yeah. want him to be better. This mm-hmm. is the uh, this is the high school senior playing better than the high school junior sophomore. Than the freshman. JV team. Yeah, this is the uh, you know guy ready to go into the NFL mm-hmm. who is defeating all of the MAC competition he plays not up e- against. Not even. I would say that the MAC would be like the second string. I I'd say like. The third string, I, I would Max's be like, not that great of a yeah, conference. But I'd say the third string is like Mitch Trubisky going up against the NAIA. Mm-hmm. That's what it looked like mm-hmm. out there. I, I I wouldn't go that far, but uh, it, it's it's this fact that he should be better, and you want him mm-hmm. to be better. I mean, if you're comparing this to a, you know, you're playing NCAA, you're playing Madden, mm-hmm. uh, you're playing your video game. He's this on, is he the, was on pro. This yeah, this is when you you turn the difficulty level down mm-hmm. and you need to turn it back up. When he yeah. gets to play against more second and first stringers, you're turning the difficulty up to see if you can compete or not. I mean, let's be honest. Let's see him go up against Atlanta's defense. Let's see him go up against Tampa Bay's defense. Well, let's see him go up against or Pittsburgh's defense. You let Glennon <laughs> take care of that for Green, you. You notice I'm on a trend here. Green Bay's well, Green Bay doesn't have a great defense, but Green Bay's defense. But they can play the Vikings defense. Like. That's a joke of a team. I want to. I want to see him go up against my Viking defense because that's the one thing I can hang my head on for sure. Mm-hmm. Is that defense in town? I, I think out of the three, the one that it's like, yeah, you did good, but eat some bench is Trubisky. He's the one where it's like, no matter what, you're not starting day one because the teams I listed, that's the Bears. I wouldn't start Trubisky no matter what until week eight. Until week eight, because then you give him seven weeks to kind of sit there and learn. And I get people are going to be like, oh, sit there and learn. But your first game you're throwing him in there is the Saints. This is a Saints team that could be down and out by week eight, could be week, because... week nine, to be fair. They have a no. bye in week eight. No, they have the bye in week nine. No, week, nine, it says is, here week on... nine is the Packers, I believe. No, that's what it says here on ESPN. Week eight is the Saints, week nine is the bye. 
That's what I'm looking at on ESPN. So you want him to play the Saints? Yes. Okay. Why I'm would you why would you have him play the Saints instead of give him a bye week? I'm not saying that you have to start him week eight. I'm saying at the soonest. Let this is what I'm what I think would be beautiful. This is let him get fan. the Packer game right yeah. off the bye. Start against the Packers at, at home. home. I mean, it would be beautiful. You can start them against the Packers, go into Lambeau and beat them, and then continue mm-hmm. a series where they will beat, where Mitch Trubisky will never lose to the Green Bay. I'm saying but that's not going to happen. I'm saying at the earliest, at the earliest, week eight. And the reason why I would be okay with them starting week eight is because that Saints defense is nothing to be scared about. Well, I, I think that you can't just sit there and say, "Well, Mike Glenn has sucked against four good de- def- or five good defenses, so let's bench him." You can't go in there and you can't do that. You're going to expect that those teams mm-hmm. are going to play well. Uh, now, if he goes out and throws five interceptions a game, mm-hmm. then yeah, okay, it's time for Mark Sanchez to come in. So that not, would be fun. And I'm not. Uh-huh. I, I don't want people to get twisted. I'm not saying like you know what week eight that's the one. I'm saying it the soonest. Could be week ten. Could be eleven. Could be fuck I, it. You know what? Let's I wait really, till thirteen. Yeah. Let his first game be against the Niners, the team that you traded with mm-hmm. to basically Ryan Pace go hey. You see this? This is what you. This is what you passed on. I really you guys think could have had that this. the he. I wouldn't expect him to start any sooner than the bye week, mm-hmm. um, just to give him as much time as possible, uh, because there's still things in his game that he doesn't quite have 100. Mm-hmm. percent I mean, he had had trouble in practice taking the ball under center, uh, because he never did it in college. I love it how his kind of his if if he was in a comic book. So far, his arc as a character in the NFL has been phenomenal because it's been highs and lows. I mean, that's what Chicago is, though, right? Highs and lows where comes out in rookie, rookie minicamp. First off, let's start. He gets drafted. Everyone's down on him. Why do we trade up for Trubisky? They're ragging on him this, but he likes titties. That's basically what loves we got. He loves titties. titties. That's loves what we kissing got. titties. That's what we got out of... Draft night. Then rookie minicamp happens. All the press is like, oh, Mitch is looking really good. Looks like we were wrong about him. Then they get to uh, the training camp. Oh, Mitch is struggling. Back down. Then this preseason game. Oh, Mitch looked really good. And now we're back up. It's like, where are we going to stand and with this And he's a rookie, guy? so I think that I think that's expected. I think that's mm-hmm. what you kind of want. You want bad things to happen, too, mm-hmm. so that way you can learn and you can fix them. Uh you know, there's nothing wrong with Mike Glennon throwing a pick six to almost, you know, start off his night. Uh, <laughs> because you can sit there and say, Mike, you threw into quadruple coverage. Why'd you do that? And then you can learn from it. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, Mike Glennon's not the rookie in this situation, but he's still a fairly inexperienced mm-hmm. player. Um, so you can learn from something like that. Now, the the, pro- the good thing for, for two of these guys, but mm-hmm. also a problem for two of these guys, is... Is it Kaiser and Trubisky? Yeah, is that they've got these people sitting in front of them. Mm-hmm. Mike Lennon is a guy who's getting paid money. Mark Sanchez really isn't much of a starter. Mark Sanchez is really there in case Glennon gets hurt week one. Yeah. So that way Mark Sanchez can play. Mm-hmm. Trubisky will probably jump over him if Glennon gets benched. Mm-hmm. Um, now the thing, the problem that I have for uh, for for Kaiser is the fact that he's sitting behind Osweiler, who's an expensive guy, um, but also a guy who has shown f- some flashes in the past, mm-hmm. and then Kessler, who's never gotten a fair chance. And I think that I liked Kessler both after of those seeing guys. Them play. Yeah, I think that both after of those guys should get the, the opportunity to start mm-hmm. before uh, Kaiser goes out there. And I think that's fair. And I think that Kaiser's the kind of um, the kind of guy who probably could definitely be advantaged towards taking a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit longer to actually get his first opportunity. I don't. I just don't think that. I don't really think any of these guys should get rushed out there. Deshaun Watson doesn't really have anyone necessarily better than him mm-hmm. in front of him, so I think he deserves the right to go out there and compete and win it. I just don't think that after the first preseason game, any rookie should ever be given the keys to the car. This is when, unless it's like Andrew Luck drafted number one overall, or like sure. Jameis Winston, yeah. Mariota types. Um, although to be fair, Trubisky was drafted number two overall, uh, but, but there he was, was a bit of an asterisk there. Of we know he, that he needs time. He wasn't the same kind of person as like Winston and Mariota. Yeah. Though. So I think that you don't. You know, if this is they just got the driver's license. Mm-hmm. 
sure, you'll let them uh, drive to the grocery store down the street and right back, but you're not going to let them drive out at 10 o'clock at night to go party with their friends. Or they're you're you're like, calm hey, down a little we want to we want to go to California. No, no, you're not. You wait a little bit, and then <laughs> you know if by week three you want to give mm-hmm. that rookie the chance to play that whole not mm-hmm. the whole game, but that you know, the whole pre-season. stretch. Yeah, the whole stretch of the week three of the preseason, mm-hmm. the the good one. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with any of these guys doing that, mm-hmm. but it's probably under the assumption that you're also going to be playing week four because you're not starting necessarily, except for maybe maybe Watson. Yeah, and I mean my big thing going getting off of Trubisky a bit because I think Kaiser's in the same one. I wanted to talk about Deshaun Kaiser to give the Browns fans something in this so it's not just all Trubisky and Watson. The thing watching the Brown Saints preseason game was I when I tuned in, I got a lot of Cody Kessler and I got Kaiser. I didn't see a lot of um, Brock the Cock, Cockadoodle do. However, Cody Kessler to me looked to form. Like when I looked at him, it's like, you know what? This is the guy. He had a beautiful long pass to where I'm like, you know what? That's the guy that should be starting. Yeah, I know he went 5 of 10, but he only got 10 passes to work with. And the thing you knew Kaiser was going to get a little bit more – the thing that bothered me with Kaiser at this point is I know you kind of want, like, it's a good thing I'll always have the feet moving, but he kind of looked skittish back there. Like, uh, oh, oh what, what's going to come? And then, like, mm-hmm. I know he had two deep passes, one of which being a 45-yard strike to um, Jordan Payton, but I believe that was, there was one that was right on the money where the guy gave him a little in and out kind of a thing, shaking the cornerback and then getting the safety, getting on the outside, getting past them. Kaiser hit him with a beautiful ball right in the bread basket. But I want to say it was the touchdown to Jordan Payton where it was a little bit where it's like your guy had room on him and you short-armed him a little bit where he had to slow up to catch it and then turn on the Jets. And, I mean, that's something small. Real small, where it's like That's you can you work on in you, practice. You can learn that. I mean, you're the new rookie, but if I'm the Browns, if I'm the Bears, I go ahead and just say, Rook, you're going to be on the bench week one. Like, we're not going to rush anything with you coming in. It's the Texans to me that really have, I don't want to say the pressure, but they have more of the opportunity for Deshaun Watson, because I'm telling you. That run that he had, I know it's one play, and I know it's a microcosm. I'm not going to do the same thing that like I was complaining about with Bears fans um, that I've seen on Twitter and such. But because of the pieces that they have around him, they have the running back. They have weapons to throw to. That defense is scary. I think Deshaun Watson can give them mm-hmm. a better chance to win. And, I mean, we didn't even talk about the – we talked about the Bears schedule where they have, what, the first eight games, I'd be like, Mitch, you ain't going up against that defense. Same thing with Deshaun Kaiser. You think I want to throw a rookie up against Pittsburgh and Baltimore, and then, oh, that's right, you get to play Indy. I know Indy's defense ain't that great, but I'm not sure if you can score over 18 points. And if we don't score at least 19, Andrew Luck for sure wins. Well, if Andrew Luck is there. If he's there. But, I mean, by that time, I'm I'm hoping that he's there. And then you get the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Deshaun Kaiser, his game, if you're going to be like, you know what, I'm not happy with Cody Kessler, week five would be a golden game for him, the Jets. Just give him the Jet game because the Jets aren't going to do anything this year. But you see the Texans, they get the Jaguars, who are great on paper. They get the Bengals, who are good but not great. They get, like, Tennessee's in there. Yet again, I'm not scared of that defense. I'm not saying it's a bad defense. I'm not scared of it. The Browns, I'm not scared of it. The only two in that first six games before they're by, the Patriots and the Chiefs. Those are the only ones that are like big, tough opponents early on for the Texans. Yeah, I, I don't think that – I don't think you want to rush anybody in there. I mean, Deshaun Watson's the guy who – for me, it's I'm not really caring mm-hmm. about the schedule that much. Um, I'm not really that concerned about the pieces around him, although mm-hmm. obviously he does have the best team around him. Yeah. To me, it's just that Tom Savage is not really much competition. Are you going to go to the playoffs with Tom Savage? That's the question you got to ask yourself. No, I don't think you can. I think you at least have a chance with Deshaun Watson. Uh, and to me, what I what I view as the next step for these guys, none mm-hmm. of these guys are starting week two of the preseason. Yeah. Um, 
you uh well there's not really much of you know bumping Deshaun Watson up you just let him play longer mm-hmm. uh for me if I'm the Chicago Bears Mike Glennon gets a little bit longer to play Mark Sanchez isn't even going to play week two you don't need to see much out of Mark Sanchez you know what he is that's yeah, why he he's only there basically played case, it down like you said he's there in case Glennon gets injured yeah I mean you just basically say Glennon you can play a little bit more mm-hmm. and Trubisky you get all of the second team reps as well. And unfortunately, you can't really do that for the Browns uh, because you need to see Osweiler, you need to see Kessler, uh, and of course you need to see the rookie. So you definitely have all of that. Um, but to me, it's just give these rookies a little bit more and then let's reevaluate and let's see if maybe one of these guys can make the leap to start week three because that's mm-hmm. a big one. That's a big test right there. But the problem with that too is you take a risk because you don't want, let's say, Kaiser or Watson or Trubisky to go out there and start week three, mm-hmm. kind of suck it up, and then get back down to you know second or third on the depth chart mm-hmm. and have them sit there and stew over, oh wow, I really fucked that chance up. You know, you don't want to necessarily do that either. It's one of those hard things to once you put somebody out there, they're out there. It's their job at that point. And mm-hmm. I mean, obviously that's not true. You can take it away if you want. But you take it away and you start fucking with that confidence and that psyche. And then you get a guy with the yips. You don't want that. Don't want you that don't with want a the rookie yips. quarterback. But the next time we're going to see these guys in or their teams in action is the Bears and the Texans will be this Saturday, 8 o'clock Eastern for the Texans, 10 o'clock Eastern for yep. the Bears. Bears at Arizona. Texans hosting the Super Bowl champions are defending Super Bowl champions, New England Patriots. The Browns, we got to wait till Monday. They're on Monday Night Football playing the New York Giants. So yep. that's the next time we're going to see each of those three teams. But I want to turn it on to you guys. Let us know. What do you guys think down below in the comment section? Should any of these quarterbacks start week one? Which mm-hmm. one are you most high on? What did you think from their performances in game one. Let us know down below what about in the Mahomes comments section. Too. Talk Mahomes, about Mahomes. Well, That's the real... I said earlier that Kaiser was a first-round pick. He's a second-round pick. Wanna, Mahomes is the real first-round pick. I want to bring that up, I wanna bring that up for one quick second because when I was talking to Dave Friday, he was like, you know what? Mahomes didn't look that good. But I'm like, Mahomes didn't get a ton of opportunities. He didn't get a ton of attempts. A lot of people are getting a game. little bit down on him, but I think it's an overreaction. No, it is. We know Alex Smith is the guy for this year for the Chiefs, but let us know down below what you guys think in the comment section. But Mark, let's move on into the next topic. And let's be honest, the next two topics are kind of like one long topic because they're kind of about the same thing, but they're looking at two sides of a three sided coin because the Eagles, like I said, they're not as impacted from the trades as the Bills and the Rams are. And we're going to look at the Bills first. We'll save the Rams for the third topic. The Bills making two trades. And just to kind of get everything out, what they have officially given up, because Sean in our text group kind of put it perfectly. So they they got Gaines, which is a corner, cornerback. They get Jordan, the drop machine Matthews, as Sean called him, a second rounder and a third rounder. They get rid of Sammy Watkins. They get rid of Darby. And they get rid of a six. So one draft pick. Two players, they gain two players, two draft picks. I basically want to ask this question, Mark, and it's very simple. Does this mean that the Bills are in full rebuild for the foreseeable future? And by full rebuild, I kind of put it in quotes because it's not like, hey, we're tanking for the first overall pick. It's more like, hey, we got a second and a third we're going to use our first, trade for these maybe, trade these later to possibly get a first so that we can have two firsts next year to have a better season in 2018. Yeah, the big problem for the Bills, because they're really not that bad of a team when, mm-hmm. you, when you start to look at them. Uh, it, the problem is that they go against Tom Brady. Twice uh, a year. And, well, he's in their division. He's going to win yeah, their division. twice a year. Um, I'm just more talking about who's in the oh, division. Oh, just overall. And then... They have the the great Jay Cutler who has entered the division, and now they're not going to win any for games. the fall in Tannehill's. Yeah, I mean Jay Cutler being in the division means the Buffaloes are probably going zero and sixteen. We can't have two zero and sixteens in the AFC East. I don't know. One of them's got to win two games. Well, you know, you can be zero fourteen and two oh, if 14. you really want. Oh jeez, could you imagine if the <laughs> Jets and the Bills oh, went zero fourteen and two? Oh god. 
and both those ties were shutouts. Please, uh, please, God, let it happen. Just hey, let we it got happen. a shutout, but we tied. Oh, please let it happen. Um, That'd be hilarious. Sorry, Bills fans. Uh, and Jets fans. But here's no, the thing. Just Bills fans. Um, I, I I do agree with you. I think that they're going into kind of this full, mm-hmm. this not necessarily full, but this kind of partial rebuild mode of we have a lot. Uh, they were watching the Bears play, and they were like, wow, this Trubisky kid looks good. Maybe if we get one of them young quarterbacks, ours will be good, too. Uh, that's a which joke, is too. In, which is interesting. It's an interesting point to bring that up, though. No, I just I just think that they are sitting there, and they have shown time and time again, we don't really care about this Tyrod guy. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get him off the team, but he just won't let go. Uh, and... They just kind of seem like they are trying to do whatever they can to just say, forget about the past. We have some good pieces, but we want to get new shiny pieces that are going to be the featured weapons. Mm -hmm. They want to get a guy who's going to replace Sammy Watkins because they, you know, Jordan Matthews is is -hmm. nothing. Uh, They want to get a guy who's not Tyrod uh, Taylor. They want to get a guy who's going to be the real deal, a young High draft pick probably is what they're going to be going for. They also are stocking some of those picks to where if they need to trade, they can do it. Uh, they want to do that. You know, they want to improve this defense, which has been fairly good, even you know after the aftermath of Rex Ryan being on the team. Uh, you know, they want to do. They basically want to kind of pull the Cubs method. If okay. I can, if I can pull a Chica- another build, Chicago build reference, build the farm team. Yeah, is is start to get the new pieces while they still have some good stuff, but they're not going to be super worried about that. They're going to just start to stockpile these draft picks, which mm-hmm. essentially is the farm system of yeah. the NFL, and just get these new shiny weapons that are going to go out there and make a difference. Uh, which is weird to me still because I don't think that this team is as bad as they go out there and perform. I mean, they just happen to underperform. And Tyrod Taylor is not a bad quarterback. I don't know why they are so adverse to him being their guy. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody gets Aaron Rodgers. Not everybody gets to have Tom Brady out there Mm -hmm. or Derek Carr, Matt Ryan. You don't always get to have some of those. Some people have to have Tyrod Taylor, an above-average quarterback. You know, there's nothing wrong with having an above-average quarterback. You're better than what? 16 other teams there's nothing wrong with that and i don't know why teams are so against it because all you necessarily need to do is have a great defense which buffalo should want that's what they used to have uh and what pretty much every nfl super bowl winning team in the past decade has had Mm -hmm. um and then get a solid run game and all of a sudden a guy like tyrod taylor looks fucking great Dak Prescott looked awesome last year. People think he's the best quarterback in the world all of a sudden. Not a lot of people, but people do. And you know why? Because the defense stepped up, not amazingly, but they stepped up, and they had Zeke, a solid running game. And I don't understand why the Buffalo Bills can't do that same thing. The thing that I'm looking at right now, and I'm kind of, okay, I've kind of found out what I'm thinking of here because – the big thing I looked at was, you know how I said you could take that two and that three and trade into the first round? Yeah. There's something we're forgetting, or I have forgotten. How many first rounders do the Bills technically have coming into 2018? I believe they have two. They have two. Do you remember who the second one is? Whose pick they have? Uh, I don't remember. We talked about their quarterback at the very end of the last segment. Uh, What? the uh, um, Patrick Browns? Mahomes. Oh, the, the Chiefs. The Chief pick. So they the have... So, because that trade was they gave the pick, the tenth pick for Mahomes, got the twenty seventh, which was uh, Tre'Davious White, got the ninety first, that was um, John Johnson, and then they got this year's first. So they technically have two. If the Chiefs are where they were last year, there's a pretty significant chance that it's going to be sub twenty five or even sub twenty. But what they can do, and I just was kind of playing around with the the NFL draft pick value calculator, let's say, just based off of um, stuff, let's say their picks in the second and third round are 37 and 69. That's about a fifth overall pick. If they're trading those two picks, the fifth pick in the second round, fifth pick in the um, third round, 
in order for equal, of course, like I'm looking for the equalest of value because the other team's not going to give up a ton of value for just those two picks. If they're going off of value, they're either looking at a 22nd or a 23rd overall pick in that first round. So you can take these and get another late guy, or you can package those two with another first like they have because, let's be honest, the chief pick is more likely going to be lower than, and when I mean lower, I mean higher in number, than their pick, you can jump up. Because yeah. one of the big questions that, I mean, you kind of touched at the very beginning of the segment, but, I mean, it's got to be answered. We've answered, or we've asked it before, but this trade really makes it true. Is Tyrod Taylor the guy? Is Tyrod Taylor the guy they stick with? And the reason why... I think, like, because of this trade, here's what I'm thinking. Because of these trades that they made, this year is a contract year for Tyrod Taylor. Because he's got, they have a potential out after this year to where they can just say, nope, we're done. Cut them, dead cap, we're moving on. And however, then after that, okay, we'll keep them for 2018. But then they got club options in 19, 20, 21. This is not a new thing that we have talked about, but mm-hmm. because of the potential out after the season, this is now a contract year. And they've shown that they don't really care mm-hmm. that much about him. And, and my big thing is I don't think Tyrod Taylor's an amazing quarterback. This isn't the Kirk Cousins situation. The guy's lighting it up, and you're still not going to pay him. But he's better uh, than but the he's worst better, quarterback in the league. It's not only that, he's better than half the quarterbacks yes. in the league. He is an above-average quarterback. Mm-hmm. And, yes, your passing game wasn't that great last year, uh, probably one of the worst in the NFL in total. Mm-hmm. But there's more to that than Tyrod Taylor. There's a lot of issues that have gone into this Buffalo Bills offense. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there, and part of that actually is the fact that it's one of the best running games in the NFL. So you're naturally going to take a, away a little bit from the passing game. Mm-hmm. But that, if anything, should just go to what the point I was saying before of build the defense. You've got... LaShawn McCoy, it doesn't get much better than that mm-hmm. for a run game. And then you don't need Tyrod to go out there and be Aaron Rodgers. You need him to go out there and be smart and make good decisions, and that's what the guy does best. Mm-hmm. The guy's going to go out there, protect the football, make wise decisions, and just kind of slowly, methodically move the ball up, game manage. That's what he can do for you. It doesn't make sense to me why the Buffalo Bills appear to want to get rid of him at all costs. And to get rid of a weapon like Sammy Watkins, Mm -hmm. sure, you can get a pick out of it, and that's nice. But, hey, they brought in Jordan Matthews. Oh, by the way, he's injured. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, I think he's day-to-day, but he's still injured day one at Bills practice. Yeah, even so, that wasn't really a great trade. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sure, you can get a pick out of Sammy Watkins, something like that, but it's just... I don't know. I mean, I guess they're admitting defeat before it even starts. They're pulling the Jets. Mm -hmm. They're admitting defeat before the season's even started. Yeah, and I mean, the thing that I'm also thinking about right now is because the one thing I think about in my head is something that Colin Cowherd mentioned when he was talking. I can't. Cam Newton, that's who they were talking about. And the thing that he mentioned was with any other position on the field other than quarterback. If you can make plays with your body and you're an ultimate athlete, you're the one I want. However, at the quarterback position, draw a line at the neck, a horizontal line. He's like, at quarterback, I don't care what's underneath. I care what's above it. I care what's up here. And with Tyrod Taylor, I think he's one of the few that, is he going to be the super athletic quarterback? No, but he can be. Like, not super athletic, but he can do athletic things, roll out, use his feet. But like you said, it's not useless information up here. It's not like, you know what, I don't have it up here, so I have to use everything down here. He's going to game manage. He's going to do everything he can to limit turnovers, limit those turnovers for the Bills. The thing that I wonder, though, that this Bills team, if they will do, and this is kind of adding in, a, another kind of wrench into this discussion, and I want to ask you this once I find out the exact situation. So let's say you're the Bills. Let's say, because we have 
This draft coming up is supposed to be a plethora, plethora of quarterbacks coming out. We still have to play the season, but there's a plethora. If there's a guy, let's say a Rosen, let's say an Allen, let's say Darnold even falls, let's say a Lamar Jackson, are you confident? Because what you could technically do, and I'm using the chief pick, I'm technically using what they had last year because I still think they're going to be good. They might be a little less, but just for the Mm -hmm. sake of argument, I'm using a 27th overall pick. Technically what they could do is trade a 27th, a 37th, and a 69th for the sake of argument for the 7th overall pick. Do you trade those three, a first, a second, and a third, to move up into the top 10 to grab a quarterback next draft, depending on what Tyrod does? Hypothetically, I might. Um, and, and part of that's just because I feel like that's what the Bill, the Buffalo Bills want to do. Mm-hmm. They appear that they want to have this quarterback. Um, so sure, I mean, you know, and and you already kind of prefaced, you know, my opinion on the. Don't worry, next draft is going to have better quarterbacks. So you know my opinions on that, but I definitely see it as something the Buffalo Bills most likely will try and do. I mean, mm-hmm. they have all these picks. They're either going to acquire tons of weapons including possibly a quarterback, Mm -hmm. or they're going to try and make a splash and trade up. Or potentially they just want the option to be able to do either one. Yeah. There's just nothing that's shown me that Tyrod Taylor is what they appear to be the answer. I mean, Mm -hmm. I honestly will not be surprised when potentially Nathan Peterman is starting for the Buffalo Bills. Dude, apparently he's looked good. I mean, Apparently he has looked good. And I mean, not like good as like, man, he could be the starter, but mm -hmm. like... There Better was, than you thought. There was something that I read today where apparently, I think it was at Bill's practice either today or last week, mm-hmm. he basically had two drives in practice with the, I want to say it was the second unit, I believe I read. Yeah. Um, but he both times brought them beyond um, midfield and on the second one set them up for a field goal. Yeah, and, and, you know, I mean, it goes back to our point that we made in the last segment of, mm-hmm. that's great, let's see it against a real defense. Um, and I think Buffalo is going to want to give him the opportunity mm-hmm. to prove it against a real defense. I I will not be surprised when Nathan Peterman takes over for Tyrod Taylor during the season, if you it's think, not before that. I'll I'll put I'll put it this way: since so you brought it out, percentage that mm-hmm. Peterman takes over this year for Tyrod. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. He's going to at some point. I when have, do you think? Late, middle, early? Not um, not I a would week, say, not a weak number. Just late, I would middle, say early. middle to late. Okay. I definitely think that they're going to do it. Um, they don't seem to be committed to Tyrod in any way, shape, or mm-hmm. form. I think they're going to want to see what this young fifth-round pick can do. Um, and if anything, it really kind of cements the idea that they're done with Tyrod. Yeah, and I mean, the thing that, just to kind of wrap some of this up, the uh, the thing about the trick, because I know we've talked a lot about the picks and what they could do for the future, but... The thing I really don't understand here from the Bills side is basically the player movement. So basically what you did was you basically said, okay, bye Ronald Darby, hello EJ Gaines. So really you lost a cornerback to gain a cornerback. If you think that's an upgrade for your team, that's great. But I, I, look I at don't it necessarily as I'm like, know that that's what they're trying to do. I think it's for them it was just – they're hoping that change of scenery mm-hmm. is going to help a couple of guys. Um, I, I can't imagine that they really think that all of a sudden we, there's this huge upgrade that they're getting from a fairly mm-hmm. uh, lateral cornerback move. Because we all know why they trade. Like the main mo for getting Watkins out of town, the main mo was you're always injured. What are you like? You're always injured. There's so many question marks around you. If like when I saw that trade first off, I'm like, great move. Injured wide receiver, send him in LA, get a cornerback. Get a cornerback because the one thing, and this is a stat I heard today, yet again from Colin Cowherd, but it's kind of true in a sense. He said the thing, and I'll see if you agree with it. He goes, Bill Belichick and the Patriots have drafted like nine cornerbacks over the X amount of years. And only like two or three have hit. And the only other ones that have hit, they change to different positions. Where it's really hard to get a good cornerback out of a draft, anywhere in the draft, to where when you can get one, 
that's good. So I'm like, okay, good. You're trading a wide receiver that really we had questions about coming in with injury problems in his yeah, um, past. injury, not skills. But you're getting a cornerback, a position that could help you. But then I saw the Eagle trade, and I'm like, so you just wanted to replace him with a different wide receiver? And you just wanted to give like and for some reason think that Jordan Matthews yeah. is that who's already much of an upgrade who like I mentioned before is already injured with a chip fracture in his sternum and I believe that he's still day to day or week to week I'm sorry not day to day week to week is the injury here from ProFootballTalk.com yeah I just for me I I don't care what what players they get mm-hmm. it's obvious that the players don't matter. In this situation, it even matter. what matters is next year's draft. The thing that's also interesting to look at is the... Okay, according to Spot Rack now, it's interesting because the Bills... The Rams could have Sammy Watkins, I think, for one more year. No, he's up at the end of the year. So him and Jordan Matthews... We're done at the end of the year anyway. So that's another reason why I'm like, you're you're confusing me here. Yeah, just rentals. What's going on here? Like you could have just got rid of them, but more so the draft picks is the big part of this and what fuels the rebuild. But is there anything that you feel like we didn't mention about the Bills and their trades that we have to touch? No, I mean I, I definitely think to answer the original question, uh the Bills appear ready to say it's time to rebuild. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I will throw out there that I heard, which is good, I was reading an article today, or it might have been a tweet, where apparently in practice um, they did 11-on-11s at Bill's camp, and it it was a tweet on ESPN. 11-on-11s, and there were like three plays where the offensive line got penalties and couldn't line up right, and I guess Sean McDermott chewed them out, tore them a new you-know-what and Richie Incognito afterwards, when he was asked about it, said that's a good thing because apparently this team is not used to that kind of an ass chewing, basically, mm-hmm. from their head coach. Kind of looks at it and goes, "Hey, was Rex Ryan the big funny guy, and uh, everything was nice, sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows for the Bills last year?" But I want to know what you guys think. Let us know down below in the comment section. Are the Bills up for a full rebuild? Using my air quotes there. Full rebuild. What did you think of the trades? What do you think they do? Are they going to make moves next year when we get to the 2018 NFL Draft? Let us know down below in the comment section. But, Mark, let's move on to the last team and the other team in this, the Los Angeles Rams receiving Sammy Watkins from the Bills, basically getting Watkins in a sixth, I believe, is what I said, from the Buffalo Bills. And basically this question is simple, and I'll kick it over to you first, because I kind of started um, the Bills one off. What does Sammy Watkins mean for Jared Goff and the Rams? Well, I mean, it, it can only be an improvement. Is really what it comes down mm-hmm. to for me. I mean, you had the probably the worst offense in the NFL last year, and there's a reason why there were coaching changes um, and why there was a lot of well dysfunction for the LA Rams last year. Uh, a a four and twelve team being one of the worst passing attacks, one of the worst rushing attacks. You're telling me you didn't enjoy seven and nine bullshit? I, I don't enjoy <laughs> I don't enjoy seven and nine bullshit. Um You know, there's a reason why why bad things happen and mm-hmm. why Jeff Fisher gets himself fired. Uh you know, when you are the team that can only throw for like hundred and eighty yards a game, can only score fourteen points in a game. Mm-hmm. Getting a guy like Sammy Watkins that has the potential to be explosive is great. Now, the problem is, is he ever going to be on the field? Who knows? Mm-hmm. But it's a one-year rental, essentially, um, to at least try and see, do you want anything different out of hand? Do you want to keep him around? Do you at least have an idea of what you can go for? Uh, because Rams traded big to get Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. And so far, it hasn't looked that great. I mean, they had a... A fun little tweet because we talked about a tweet uh, in the last segment that Jared Goff threw three interceptions on Monday, Mm -hmm. uh, but it could have been five. And it's just like... Monday being today as we're recording this? Yeah, on Monday. And it's just one of those things of, you know, and I don't want to overreact to practice. Uh, We're not talking about practice. But it just comes down to things are not looking that great in Mm -hmm. L.A. So 
Got to try something, right? Got to no. give something a shot. No, and you do. And the thing is, I look at this, and really the L.A. Rams have done what they needed to to say, okay, we're giving you weapons. Because at first it was just Tavon Austin. And let's be honest, Tavon Austin has been injured most years. So I know what you're thinking. Huh. So they took one injury-prone wide receiver and said, what's better than one? Let's have two injury-prone well, wide receivers. at least one of them's bound to be on the field. Or none of them on the field. They also have Robert Wood. So basically what they do is now they basically said, you know what, Jared, we're just going to give you the Buffalo Bills. Because it used to be Watkins and Woods on the side of one another. I know what you could be thinking. You could have said that from the good side, like, oh, these wide receivers know each other. Sammy Watkins can come in, knows the guys he's going to be on the other side of the field with, with Robert Woods signing in free agency. I like this move from a scheme fit, and I might be wrong here, but hear me out. You get Watkins on the outside. Of course he needs to be healthy. You have Woods on the other outside. Now you allow Tavon Austin. Yes, you can have him. On an outside, you can have him on an inside going on a vert. But now you allow Tavon Austin to really use one of his better speeds, or his better skills, which is speed, that I just kind of spoiled there. And you let him just play the slot. And you let him own the slot. And you let him own the slot. You can use him on reverses with fake or handoffs to the wide receiver. This could be good. The big question, though, is... Is Tavon Austin going to stay healthy? Because I was looking at an article right here from Fansided and their um, rambling fan blog for the Rams, and they even are asking the question, could Tavon Austin miss the remainder of the preseason? And then you've got the Sammy Watkins where it's like, what could go wrong will go wrong, and will a new scenery keep him injury-free? I mean, yeah, it's going to be tough, injuries being the... Mm -hmm. The main concern, but if that's why it's it is nice that you just kind of have them for the year, see what happens. If it doesn't work, whatever is really what it's going to come down to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you're not really that worse off than you were before. Um, you know, you look at the draft in 2017 for the Rams. They didn't have a first round pick, but second and third round, they're trying to address uh, the offensive side of the ball. They even go back to get a second wide receiver in the fourth. So they're trying to do something. They're trying to get weapons. They're trying to make it work for this young quarterback who mm-hmm. definitely needs he needs something because this offense does not have much to to get that excited about. I mean, sure, you would assume that the running game should be fine because you invested in that, but you'd assume With the Todd quarterback Curley. position would be fine because you invested in that, and previously you invested in the wide receiver position. None of these things really seem to be making a difference on the field. Mm-hmm. Even when Todd Gurley's case, uh, and even Tavon Austin too, they're good players, mm-hmm. but still not making an actual difference yet. Yeah, um, and really just leads you to believe that maybe there's more wrong with this team than just those players, and that's why well, you have a new coach, and that's yeah. why you're you're you know you're starting from from the very beginning again. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the true indicator of let Sean let Sean McVay have his have his time in the sun, basically, and that's yeah. not a pun for. LA, it's basically you're having a new the quarterback stayed, the coach was gone. That's what Les Snead wanted, and that's what he got. Now you're bringing in McVay. And the big thing that I think this Sammy Watkins trade, how it affects the Rams, especially with this Tavon Austin situation, because there's a tweet here from Rich Hammond where he says McVay said he expects Tavon Austin to miss another week of practice and left open possibility that Austin won't play the rest of the preseason. The thing that this Rambling Fan article then goes into is, and I'll read a quote here, whether Austin wants to admit it or not, missing all of this time away from practice and preseason games only hurts his role in McVay's offense. It's one thing for him to miss time in the offseason while recovering from a wrist surgery, but seeing him miss even more time over this hamstring is beyond frustrating for all parties. This trade could be, I know that I'm like, oh, this could be the positive side. He could be used in this role. But if he doesn't see the field in preseason, this could be the trade if Sammy Watkins is healthy. I keep having to put that asterisk out there, is this could be the trade to 
push Tavon Austin to the side. Be like, nope, we've got our main two, and then Cooper Cup, who is also right behind him trying to get mm-hmm. more playing time for himself, this could push this trade could push Tavon to the side because there's no room for you in the starting lineup. There's I mean, no room we'll, out there. we'll see what happens because I don't think Sammy Watkins has anything locked up. And mm-hmm. he said it himself that's going to take him, you know, maybe a week and a half to start to really get this offense. Mm-hmm. So he's not going to look like Sammy Watkins from the get go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's saying it himself. So I'm not going to say for sure this is pushing anyone out the door. Um, I'm just saying it's just could. options. I'm just saying it could. I'm not like, oh, I'm on sure. Sammy Watkins, but it could push him to the side, especially, like I said, let's be honest. Sammy Watkins, it could take you a week to get the offense, but take as much time, like, take as much of the preseason as you want because right now Tavon Austin's not out there. Yeah. Tavon Austin's mm-hmm. not out there to prove himself. And I'll ask you this What are reasonable expectations for Sammy Watkins in year one with the Rams? I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know what reasonable expectations would be because this team's offense is one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Mm hmm. Uh, at least last year it was. So, I mean, your expectations are really anything. Anything that helps us. Anything that can get us more than 14 points a game. That's really what it comes down to for me is this team's offense, this team's ability to score was absolutely terrible last year. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be because they've invested in this offense as much as pretty much any team in the NFL. Uh, So there's got to be something that picks them up. Here's a question that I'm thinking of in my head, and it's basically because, like, yet again, I'm looking at an article now where uh, with Watkins on board, Rams will finally know what they have in golf. Let's say the end of the year, the Rams go, I don't know, something like two wins, two, three wins, and it's a dismal season for the Rams. Let's say they even go four or five wins. Still not a winning season. At the end of the year... If you have to look into your crystal ball, do you see more of the blame being put on Jared Goff or a Sammy Watkins? Because I can still see at the end of this year, I could still see a bad season from the Rams and then Ram fans and Ram ownership going, no, 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 Goff is fine. We just got to get them better. Like Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods weren't good enough. We we upped it. We we got better than Tavon Austin, but we still got to get better at that position. What do you see? I don't think that the Rams are going to be quick to throw uh, Jared Goff under the bus because they traded so much to get him. They traded so much to get him, and I think it's fair. He didn't have really much of a chance last year. He mm-hmm. wasn't given an opportunity by the team. Um, so essentially, this is still kind of a rookie year for him, mm-hmm. and. Sammy Watkins has a lot of skill, but he doesn't really stay on the field. So I don't really think he's going to have an opportunity to make things better. Uh, You're in a new offense, brand new offense here. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of change going on for the Rams, and there's going to be a lot of change over the next probably two, three years as well. I think Jared Goff is going to get some passes. Whether he deserves them or not is what you want to say, and you're going to probably say it in the comment section. (laughs) Uh, Feel free. But... I think he's going to get some passes no matter what happens. Here's the thing that I'm thinking of, and this is a hypothetical. I don't want to piss off any Ram fans, so before I say anything, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just finding the, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm trying to read between the lines here and what could happen, and I want to see a little research really quick to see if it can pay off. So... They were, uh, if I'm looking at the draft, it doesn't have his draft here, does it? Um, But the thing that I'm looking at is on the depth chart, quarterback-wise, who's the guy right behind Jared Goff? Do you know? Off the top of your head? Is it still Manning? It's still Manning, who is quarterback from Oregon State. He was drafted in 2016, or 2015, Goff was 2016. Here's the thing that I think could be interesting and could be, would this play out in L.A. land? Think about another team that I know this is a year off in quarterbacks. They drafted two in the same year. What if Jared Goff, it just doesn't work and the Rams are left and we look at Goff as like the same mistake? as It's different than RG3 in the sense of, 
RG3 got injured, and that's what derailed him. But could this be seen as that same thing? Like, man, the Rams gave up so much to get him, and it didn't work out. And wouldn't it be funny if then if that happened, Manning comes in and basically Kirk Cousins the situation? It could be interesting. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I haven't seen very much of the kid play, mm-hmm. so I don't want to really say much of anything about him because I really don't know much about mm-hmm. him. Um, and I'm okay with admitting that I don't know much uh, about um, the second string quarterback we, on we the all know L.A. Rams. Because we know the third stringer, Dan Orflowski. Yeah, we know there's nothing coming out of him. Yeah. He'll, he'll only do one thing, and that'll be uh, run out of the back of the end zone. That's what he's good at. But I Good feel, for safety. I feel like if this was a situation where this guy's eventually going to come up and take a job from Jared Goff, Jared Goff has not looked good really at all mm-hmm. so far in his NFL career. So if it was going to happen— there's a good chance it would have probably happened already. No, yeah, and I mean the thing for the Rams, kind of the. But kind I of, just just to add to that, I ahead. think the only thing I could see, I don't see that happening. I could potentially see a situation, you know, like a Jimmy Clausen, a Mike mm-hmm. Glennon type of situation of this team gets a first round pick again or a second round. I mean, I'm sorry, first overall, second overall in the near future, mm-hmm. and they're just gonna say. Yeah, all right. I know we spent a lot on you, but uh, it's too late. We're going to spend a lot on the new guy. Well, let me ask you this, because I don't want to give anything too far away, because next week is our official hold us to him predictions. But, and you know me, I like to tinker in the last week. I of like course. to look at, and I just like Things to... Things change. I like to over tinker in the last week. But as of right now, if I'm going through what draft pick the Rams would have, they would be one, two... Three, they would either be the fourth or the fifth pick, which is this year, let's be honest, could be prime quarterback number. With especially That's what with they're all in about Darnold, Rosen's out there, Allen's out there, Mayfield's out there, Rudolph's out there. If they're a top five pick, I'll just leave it up to top five. If they're a top five pick this year, do the Rams think, think about drafting a quarterback? Depends what's there. Depends what's there and what how they feel about these guys. Um, I don't think that the Rams are. If, if you're they, a fan, would you want them to think about it? That depends. Depends how this offense plays. If this offense is still one of the worst offenses in the NFL, then yeah, mm-hmm. of course you do. I mean, that's the hard thing with the Rams. They were so bad last year mm-hmm. that they're almost impossible to say anything in the future about because it has to get better, right? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't. Then, I mean, it's a clear cut, yeah, let's make some changes. Things went wrong. Because the draft picks that they have this year is, as of right now, they have their first rounder still. They do not have a second rounder now because they sent that to Buffalo for Sammy Watkins. They have a third, a fourth, a fifth, two, three sixes because they've got the Bills, the Lions, and um, the their own sixth and a seventh. So they have now lost their second rounder coming into 2018's draft. So I look at it and I go, you know how we talked about, hey, this could be a contract year for Tyrod Taylor with the Bills. This isn't a contract year for Jared Goff, but this is the year where it's like, hey, kid, we gave, we're giving you a new head coach. We're giving you a guy that we think can work well with you. We're also giving you a nice shot. We, we brought in Robert Woods who wasn't the shiniest of new weapons, but he could work. We're now giving you a guy who potentially could be a true, like, and when I say potentially true number one, I'm not trying to slap Sammy Watkins in the face. I'm just saying with the injury, he's got to be healthy. Yeah. He's got to be healthy for, could be a true number one for this team. This could be the year where it's like, hey, dude, I know you're a sophomore. Put up or shut up. No, it's not. It's not that time yet. I mean, we're going to want to say it probably in in media world, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of fans are going to want to say it, but when you invest that much in a quarterback I'm, and you make all these changes early I'm and not, the team was pretty devoid of a lot of mm-hmm. talent on the offensive side of the ball, no, it's not time yet. And when I say put up or shut up, I'm not saying, like, if you fail, then you're off the team. When I say put up or shut up, I want – if I'm a Rams fan – I'm going into the season, if a, if you have a healthy Sammy Watkins, I'm looking at it and go, if I can be as excited in Jared Goff 
as Bear fans are as excited in Mitch Trubisky after one preseason game, if I can have that same excitement, like this team could go three and thirteen. But if I have that same excitement that Bear fans have, that you have right now after watching Mitch play one preseason game, which I believe you lost that game, right? Yep. Did they lose? They so lost. You lost the game, but still that excitement. If I can feel that after the season, it's a win. That's what I want mm-hmm. to see from Jared Goff. I want to see the excitement at the end of this year and be excited for you heading into 2018 where in the first round we're not thinking about getting a quarterback. We're thinking about which wide receiver are we going to grab to give you another weapon. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, that's kind of what you would want for mm-hmm. being a fan. Uh, I just want to pump the brakes on anybody who's going to try and put too much pressure on Jared Goff right now because, mm-hmm. like I said, this is essentially his rookie year. His true rookie year? Yeah, he's got a brand new coach. He barely had an opportunity to do mm-hmm. anything last year. Uh, there's a lot of new things going on in L.A., and there's going to be a lot of new things going on in L.A. next year and the year after that as well. Plus, so. I mean, you've got to – basically, you've – You've got to win more games than the Chargers. That's your goal. That's in my mind like, to win LA. To win LA, you got to win LA right now. Because well, fortunately, you got an advantage because nobody wants L, uh, the LA Chargers to be there. Because I know that I mean, if the whoever, whichever team is doing better, that's where more people are going to flock. I mean, you made a Cubs reference earlier in the podcast. I'll make one now. We've seen it in Chicago when we were in high school. When we were, when it was 2005, right? That was when the White Sox won the World Series. Yep. When it was around that time, a ton of Sox jerseys, tons of them. Now we're looking now. Eh, I did, how, I disagree. I'm though. just saying, how many Cub jerseys do you? I, the Cubs have always been more popular than the White Sox. More, they always will be more popular in the sense of like non-baseball. I'm talking about like I always saw in 2005. I it was like when I saw you a live Cubs on the fan, south side though. I know, but now it's like I fucking see cub shirts all mm-hmm. over and it's like you were a Sox fan two years ago what now you, you doing? definitely had the bandwagon fans yeah and the bandwagon fans are always going to switch that's back what i'm forth. talking about whichever um, team is like those those fans i'm not talking to diehards the diehards are i'm not on the saying side. the diehards either i'm but saying that middle ground is going to the chicago sway. cubs have always been a team where it's popular to be a chicago cubs fan mm-hmm. it will always be popular they've been they were shitty for 108 years like, it was popular to be a cubs fan let's Prime example, L.A. fans may know this well. It's kind of like how we joke about the Clippers and the Lakers in L.A., how Mm -hmm. L.A. will always be a Laker town. And, yeah, you have that Clipper jersey right now, but you're stroking it like this because you know it's reversible and that Laker jersey is underneath. And yeah. You're just waiting to still flip got it. That Kobe, uh, <laughs> still got that Kobe jersey you're in the just wait, waiting you're just to waiting, pull it out. You're just waiting to yeah, flip I it mean, inside and out. I honestly don't necessarily think that – I don't think the L.A. Chargers are ever going to win L.A. No, I really don't. I there's think more, they're, there's more diehard Ram fans from yeah, the old days. I think they're going to be a, actually a pretty comparable situation mm-hmm. to Cubs Sox here in Chicago. Yeah. Of the Cubs and the Rams are always going to be the two teams that people are going to like. Um, now the Rams don't quite have the same advantage that the Cubs have, but they have uh, the following that they built when they used to be in. LA. Yeah, exactly. They used so to it's be kind of an in unfair the advantage in that case. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were the first ones to come back. Yeah, that certainly helps too. And them leaving St. Louis had a lot less negative press, negative Mm -hmm. PR than San Diego uh, getting up and abandoning. Mm -hmm. You can tell in the way I say it, getting up and abandoning uh, their loyal fans. Well, it's like, well, we got a comment on one of your your Charger predictions where it was like, you know what, great preview, but I had to downvote because fuck the Chargers. And I get it. I respect it. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know down below what you guys think. What does Sammy Watkins mean for Jared Goff and the Rams? And let us know what you think about anything we talked about today. We are done with the fast break. Next week, Mark, what are we doing? What what, what are we doing next week? Uh, well, here on the onside kick, yes. we're going to be doing our predictions. Or hold them to them. Um, hold us to them. As long as some catastrophic injury doesn't happen, like last year, where we had to hold us to... Wait, hold on, let's change it. Now hold us to it. Yeah. Um, We'll see what happens. Basically, let's let's hope that Ryan Tannehill is the last one to fall. But let's be honest. He's I the mean, only one to fall. When it really comes down to it, week one, everything changes anyways. Yeah, week one, everything does change. But we will have our f- official season predictions next week Although, for you guys. The only thing I do think, though, mm-hmm. shouldn't it, it isn't it usually... Doesn't it make more sense? And we're just going to do this on the year, because okay. why the hell not? Go ahead. Doesn't it make more sense to do it after week three? 
Just in case of Deshaun Watson gets that starting job or something like that. No. I think it makes more sense. The only reason why I say no is it's the same reason why, because Colin Cowherd does it a step above us. Mm -hmm. He does, he calls them the pre-preseason rankings. Basically, I have not seen anybody play, these are my predictions. I'm not going that crazy because I need to see a little little bit of preseason. That's that's just silly. He goes, don't want to see anyone play, pre-preseason comes out before you play a preseason game. These are my predictions. Yeah. I think you got to do it before week one. You got to do it before week well, one. I, I didn't say you're not. I'm saying do it after week three, before week one. Do it in week four of the preseason. Oh, I thought you were saying yeah. week three of the regular no, season. No, no, oh, that's okay. silly. That's silly as well. Okay. Yeah, do it. We're, we're currently uh, slated to do it week two. Maybe I'm saying we push it back week two, week three. Let's be honest. There's a little you. There's a little uh, the, the YouTube and uh, the, there's a little view counter thing that mm-hmm. really puts it in. We, we got to have it up so these guys can see it. I Give agree. Them I just to think, digest it. I just think that a hold it. You guys, let us know down below. You can help Ricky and I decide this debate if you would like. Even though you know Ricky's probably gonna do what Ricky wants to do. Uh, We're doing it next week. Is don't you agree with me? Okay. That it makes more sense to do a hold us to them after week three when most people win their starting jobs. Doesn't that make more sense? We're probably not going to do it that way. We're not. We're doing it next week. But doesn't it make more sense? Just let me know that I'm right and Ricky's wrong, and that's all that matters. We're doing them next week. We will have our official predictions next week for you guys. Thank you guys for Mine's going to have an asterisk next to it. <laughs> you noticed in your bear prediction I did that next did to you? the Packers. I put, there you go. I put an asterisk because you said put an asterisk next yeah. to it because you could win the home game with the Trubiscuit. If he plays, <laughs> I mean, he's the GOAT, so it's already been decided. Let us know. Tom Brady won it and lost it as soon as the preseason started. Let us know what you guys think down below. I want to thank you guys for either watching on YouTube or listening on Blog Talk Radio and anywhere you can find podcasts on the web. Thank you guys, and as always, have a good day, everybody. 